Now that we are comfortable with different methods of proof, let's take a look at some proofs of existence and uniqueness. Quite often in mathematics, we are interested in proving that something exists or that a unique something exists, meaning there's only one of those items that matches those criteria. So we're going to take a look first at a proof of existence, and then we'll take a look at a proof of uniqueness as well. When you prove existence, you have a choice. We're going to start by showing you a constructive proof. And a constructive proof basically says, if I'm trying to show that something exists, just find an example for which it's true, and therefore you've shown it exists. And that's what we're going to do for this first example. It says there exists a pair of consecutive integers, consecutive, of course, meaning in a row, such that one integer is a perfect square and the other is a perfect cube. So the best way to go about this is to really just start looking at perfect squares. If I'm looking at perfect squares, I'm looking at one squared. Well, let's just make a little table out of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and hope we don't have to go past that. And now I'm going to look at squares and cubes. And I'm going to stop when I feel satisfied. These are squares and these are cubes. One squared is one, one cubed is one. Two squared is four, two cubed is eight. Three squared, three times three is nine, three cubed is 27. Now keep in mind, I'm just looking for a pair of consecutive integers. And I'm gonna stop because I've already found it. Right here, I have eight and nine. So I have shown, and again, not in a very mathy or scientific way, I've just done the math to find out that the pair of numbers, since two cubed equals eight, and three squared equals nine, then there exists a pair of integers such that one is a perfect cube and one is a perfect square. So all I had to do was show that I could find one, and I found one. So that's all I have to do. Proof of existence by constructive proof. Let's take a look at another example. There is a rational number x and irrational number y such that x to the y is irrational. So you can also prove this by a non-constructive proof, which is essentially to say, assume that there are no values for x and y that would make that statement true and then we contradict it by saying oh look in fact it is true so for instance let x equal 4 which of course is rational and y equal radical 2 which is irrational and we have already proven previously that radical 2 is in fact irrational. Well, now let's say um, 4 to the radical 2 and when we determine what that value is, this is actually irrational and so essentially what we've done is we've said, hey, nothing is going to make this true but oops, we actually just made it true using a rational and an irrational. So we are in fact done. We have proven it by non-constructive. We've assumed that it wasn't going to work and it did in fact work. Let's look at one proof of uniqueness. And whenever we're trying to prove that something is unique, there are two parts to our proof. First is that we have to prove existence or that we show an element X 
with that property exists. So in this case, we would be showing that an element X or R in this case with this property AR plus B equals zero exists. And then we have to show that it is unique or we have to show that if X does not equal Y, so if X and Y are two different numbers or R and say S or whatever letter we use, we show that if those two values are not the same, then Y does not have that property. So let's take a look. If I start by saying, um, let R, and R is my value right here, let R equal negative B over A. And essentially I used that because I rearranged this to solve for R because I wanted essentially R to be true. So let R equal negative B over A, then R is a solution to a r plus b equals zero. And of course I knew it was a solution because that's where it came from. Let me make sure that looks like an r. But of course we can always plug it in. So I can say a times r, which is negative b over a, plus b equals zero. If I multiply that out, my a's cancel, I get negative b plus b equals zero, and then I get zero equals zero. So I have just proved the existence of a value R that is equivalent to negative B over A that is a solution to my equation. And now I have to show that essentially that it is unique. So I'm going to say, suppose that S is a real number such that AS plus B equals zero. So I'm essentially saying, hey, it's not unique. I've got this other value, um, AS plus B equals zero. And I'm going to say, then, let me get a new color here, then AR plus B is the same as AS plus B, that these things are equivalent. Now I already know that I can subtract B from each side, so I get that AR is the same as AS. If I divide each side by A, I get R equals S. So essentially I've shown that it's not, if I've shown that this part is not true, X does not equal Y, I'm saying nope, R must equal S in order for all of this to be true. And therefore I have shown that if A and B are real numbers and A does not equal zero, then there is a unique real number R with a value of negative B over A such that AR plus B equals zero. Great work. Coming up next, we are going to switch gears. We're going to get away from proof for a little bit and start looking at some set theory. So the next video is introduction to sets.